Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the previous video we talked about application of electric field to the gas insulation, the electron would gain energy and it would cause further ionization. We talked about electrons only, in this equation we also have a positive ion. In this particular video we discuss the role of the positive ion. Now what do you have? What do you have? Positive ion is a charged particle, so the electric field will apply the force on the charged particle as well. If it's a neutral atom, you don't have any, any what? You don't have any field on it, you are moving randomly. But when you are a charged particle in an electric field, you have to go in the direction of the field. Right? Electron will move towards the anode, the positive ion will drift towards the cathode. Drift means it will go slowly. It is a massive particle, the mass is higher, so the speed would be lower. Do you know how to calculate the mass of a positive ion? For example, for example, you are given a sodium atom, let's say. You have a sodium 11, 23, right? So what does this suggest? The atomic number and the mass number. So which means that the number of electrons are how much? The number of electrons are 11. The number of protons are how much? The number of protons are 11. Proton and electrons are the same. And the number of neutrons would be then 23 minus 11 would be 12. So how do you calculate the, the mass? of an atom or let's suppose this this is an ion so how do you do it so the mass of the ion or the mass of an atom is equal to the mass of the electron plus mass of the nucleus mass of the electrons plus mass of the nucleus so which is what mass of electron so you've got 11 electrons you have 9.1 into 10 to the power negative 31 plus mass of the nucleus 12 no sorry 23 items are there the mass of the proton and neutron is approximately the same which is 1.67 into 10 to the power negative 27 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 27 right and then if you don't have time so you can neglect this one why because have a look again there is a huge amount of a difference at least a four zeros difference four decimal places difference so this is quite smaller this is quite smaller than this one again so you can neglect this only calculating this you can calculate the mass of the positive ion for example the mass this i have calculated the mass of the sodium atom which is 36.8 in 10 power negative 27 36.8 into 10 to the power negative 27 7 kg this is the mass of the sodium atom but for instance for instance I say that what do you have is this is a mass of any positive ion given how will you be given in the question is that this is a sodium atom it loses one electron to become a positive ion so then you will put the number of electrons as 10 and do the calculations right yes so a positive ion would be you know the same as the 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 the, uh, the atom itself so let's say I take it like this. Now what happens is this is also present in the electric field. So the charge is present. So a force will act. Right. And how much? So this will acquire kinetic energy from the field as the electron did. So the kinetic energy is what? The kinetic energy is half mass of the ion. I will put it as this and u of the ion whole squared. So in this case what do you have it the mass of uh, uh, this is a little massive particle so you have is what the 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 uh, the velocity is in 10 to the power 4. So you have a half mass of the ion is 36.8 into 10 to the power negative 27 and multiplied with what with a 10 to the power 4 whole squared so the kinetic energy comes out to be 11.4 in electron volts no i have it 184 into 10 to the power minus 20 184 into 10 to the power minus 20 joules or you divide it by 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 19 to get the kinetic energy which is 11.4 electron volts. 11.4 electron volts. So, now 
when this is incident upon a neutral atom will it be dangerous for that will it cause collision ionization so yes definitely it will cause collision ionization but it is not dangerous or you could say the current would not increase due to this why because it will eject an electron but it is a positive ion it has an affinity to catch an electron so this would catch that electron ejected and it will become a neutral atom right yes so we are talking something about a sort of equilibrium do I have some space over here I don't so uh, what I am talking is that you have a positive ion and you have it incident on a neutral atom so what is the result that this neutral atom has ejected an electron and has became a positive ion but the ejected electron would be captured as soon as it is ejected by the same positive ion to become a neutral atom so have a look this is we are talking about an equilibrium space charge region we have established some sort of an equilibrium so the current would not increase the current would not increase right yes but but the positive ion is moving with the field in the field in a certain energy with a certain energy the electrons are moving the electrons when reach the anode they will be absorbed into the anode because they are very light particles. But the positive ion, when it reaches the cathode, it will not be absorbed because of its higher mass. It will collide. It will collide. And the cathode is a metal material. So you have an associated work function. Work function. Work function is what? Denoted by a phi k. So phi k, this is the minimum amount of energy required to do what? To dislodge an electron from a metal. Have a look. Have a look. It hit a neutral atom. What happened? It cut, cut back the electron and became a neutral. So we talked about an equilibrium. But when it hits the cathode, it can eject electrons from over there. So that could again be a problem. Say the work function of this is what? Say the work function is a 9 electron volt. So what do you have? How much electrons will be emitted? So the number of electrons would be my energy 11.4 divided by 9. So something a fraction of 1. So 1.3 if it is. So we are not interested in the fraction. So you've got only one electron uh, ejected. And that is no problem. Because this electric ejected electron would be directly absorbed by the positive ion. But. But if. If I talk about the work function to be 4 electron volts. So the number of electrons would be 11.4 upon 4 which is something about 2.8. So which means you've got 2 electrons. So out of this one would be absorbed. But one would be available for conduction in the gap. One would be available in the connection from the gap and this would take the difference of energy and it would be available. What energy would it take? The energy it would take would be the difference of energy. I would take it as delta E and delta E is what? You have the available energy is 11.4 minus how much have you utilized in freeing this? So you have utilized uh, 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 in what? 2.8 2 times 4, yes? 2 times 4. Yes, for, uh, work function is 2. Work function is 4 and you have 2 for each. So which means 11.4 minus 8. So now the remaining energy. The remaining energy is a 3.4 electron volts. 3.4 electron volt. This energy, this single electron has acquired. The, the, the difference of energy, the remaining energy. This was the total energy you had. This is the, the energy that you have utilized in 
in ejecting electrons. So the difference of energy is taken by this one electron volt. Convert it to joules and you can find out the velocity with which it would move. So UE, I already have it over here, two times the kinetic energy. So two times 3.4 multiply 1.6, 10 power negative 19 and divide by the mass of electron 9.1, 10 to the power negative 31. So the velocity with which this would move in the field is how much? It is again 10 to the power negative 6. 1 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. This would move with a higher velocity again. And what do you have with again? It would cause further ionization and the current would increase. In the previous video, I talked about circuit breaker. The contacts of the circuit breaker are again made of metals. So, we would have this problem in the circuit breaker as well. So, what do you say? What could be the remedy? Use a material, use a metal with a higher work function, of course. Use a material with a higher work function, the cathode material or the circuit breaker context should be made of such materials which have a higher work function. Yes, you are completely wrong. You are completely wrong. Yes. Why? Because let's suppose first of all I say this would be expensive. A good metal would be expensive. No, that is not the reason. What do I mean by work function? Work function is the capability to, to take out electron from the metal. The energy required to take or the ease with which you get electron from metal. So if it is of a higher work function, this means that you require more energy to take an electron from the metal. So which means that now this is not remaining a good metal. Higher the work function, the bad the metal is. The bad the conductor is, I would say. But over here, the circuit breaker is a normally closed switch which means that it has to pass the normal amount of current so if for that if i take a higher work function it cannot pass the normal amount of current that then that i'm using it as an insulator but over here i'm not talking about the cathode material or the context of the circuit breaker to be an insulator right so the problem still is there the problem is still there with higher work function, the resistance would increase. Of course, the voltage drops would increase, the losses would increase, the efficiency would decrease. So, of course, I will not go for the higher work function. What will I do? What will I do? So, for that, let's say we meet in the next video. Let's say we meet in the next video. But before going into the next video, let me just draw the graph that the book has mentioned over here, which is the gap current versus the voltage graph. So gap current versus the voltage graph. Okay, so what happens is initially, initially the current increases from zero to a certain value of I naught, let's say. Let's say this is the current I naught that I talked about that has to be there and this is called as region A and the region A is what this is the photo ionization region. The current would be there and we cannot get rid of this. The applied voltage till here is let's suppose V1. You further increase the voltage so the current won't that much of an increase, don't, won't see that much of an increase and, and, and this would be something like this till V2 let's say and this one is let's say region B and region B is the equilibrium or the space charge region where the uh, the ions would be we would be catching the electrons and then finally further increase in the in the voltage would see what would see an avalanche region this region C this would be your avalanche region now the book has had a discussion on this so you can just read it out from the book that in the photo ionization what happens is the applied voltage is not sufficient to produce collision on a sizable scale so the current is due to the already present free electrons right yes 
then what you have the voltage is low between be, below v1 so the electric field is less the energy of the moving electron is not sufficient to produce ionization so you have only photo ionization and the current is what this is i not this is will increase definitely with the, with the voltage applied so this is only the photo ionization region then you have what you have the equilibrium or the space charge region so over here the electric field is sufficient to produce collision ionization when it is increased beyond v1 but what do you have when you see the less mobile positive charge i so uh, they have uh, um, uh, they do what they uh, will capture back the electron so you would see that the current almost saturates a very small amount of uh, uh, you know increase so this is called the near equilibrium state you could say the gap current is due to the flux of electron reaching the anode the equilibrium persists so long as the positive ions are sufficient in number to capture electrons you have sufficient number of ions so they would be capturing electrons not after that right yes so you would see a very small increase in v12 from v1 to v2 then you have what you have the avalanche region is region c so when most of the positive ions have been reverted back to neutral atoms high energies to the all now you have uh, the positive ions are reverted you only talk of electrons and have a look you have electrons you have light particles it has got quite a huge amount of speed and you've got a very high amount of voltage as well so what we do it they will gain energy from the field and you have further ionization by collision and a very high voltage a very high energy so a for a sharp increase in the current is and you have an enormous collision ionization activity this is the voltage is beyond 10 to the power 8 volts per meter right yes and after that you see a breakdown the electron avalanche produces a large current accompanied by a conductive plasma formation the plasma forms an arc resulting in an increased conductivity the result is the dielectric breakdown and the field necessary is called the breakdown field most commonly dielectric strength or the breakdown strength at which a voltage it occurs it occurs at a breakdown voltage or the spark over voltage the arc is in the form of a luminous channel which follows the least distance between the two electrodes the arc is accompanied with very high temperatures and high thermal energies sufficient to melt metals so this was all about it this is about the breakdown of a gaseous insulation we saw that it has breakdown but we see that it has a very high amount of current this is applicable in circuit breakers we got a remedy over here i will see you in the next video for that till then take care of yourselves everyone around you to remember me in your prayers to subscribe to the channel goodbye